and in this video today we have uh, Justin's Honda CRX Del Sol. It's a clean, tidy, unabused example. It's been well taken care of. It's got low mileage and it was uh, it came in completely standard. Uh, we've made a few mods to it and we did a bit of dyno testing and we'll show you the results here uh, just for a bit of uh, old school fun. So I'll take you around the car. So yeah, this is this is Justin's car. Justin bought the car from England. It was uh, pretty much standard. In fact, I think it was completely standard. Uh, the first thing he did was put a set of coilovers in it, which was done in here as well. Uh, he fitted a nice set of Team Dynamics wheels on it there. And after a while, he decided that he wanted to go and get the exhaust chains. Now, what we have done is we brought the car in, we put it on the dyno in completely standard form. So uh, you'll see the dyno video in a, in a second, or both runs before and after. Uh, we then fitted the manifold, which Justin supplied there. It's a super straight manifold. I think it's just uh, more or less a, a generic type manifold. Uh, fitment was reasonably okay. A few bits and bobs needed moved. The radiator needed adjusted slightly and that sort of stuff. Uh, and the usual case, it sits slightly low because I think they're designed to fit a B18 engine as well. Uh, but after the manifolds, uh, sorry, there's a two bolt manifold, or sorry, a two bolt flange. We'll get this right yet. Two bolt flange on the far end of that manifold there. So we cut that off. We put a V band on it and we ran a two and a half inch system right the way back. Uh, it was a custom built system here at G Sport. Well, I'll fire some pictures up there on the post as well so you can see the, the system. Uh, turned out okay and then we did a dyno run after and I'm going to show you the results so what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll fire the dyno the both the before and after dyno videos I'll fire those up my mouth just isn't working right at all today so I'll fire those up and you can get a look at the videos and then after that we'll take a look at the results <laughs> results here and uh, I for one am pleasantly surprised uh, it was a good result so we'll take the, the first dyno run which would be the before run which was done on a completely factory car so completely standard exhaust standard intake everything nothing had, nothing had been touched at all uh, which of course is the lower of the two now let me just get rid of the, the runs that we did after there let me just take those off the screen so we can get a better look so this is the three factory runs uh, basically overlaid and you can see the consistency there uh, there's three runs in there that's the torque nice flat torque curve right the way across which is good uh, horsepower is quite linear our fuel ratio as well sitting there about 13 afr pretty much all the way out which is which is perfect uh, and you can see it's a fit and healthy car uh, no issues there just as we expected there's only 40 something thousand miles in this car so uh, you expect it to be in pretty good shape. So let's bring on again the the last few runs we did there. So I'll just take off these old ones just so we can have a look at the last few runs before we do the comparison. So again, here's the last few runs. Um, again, much, much the same. Can't really tell much difference here when it's not overlaid with with the older runs, but much, much the same. A nice flat torque curve, although you can clearly see up in the, in the peak end here, the torque does climb a bit sooner there than what it did before. And again, of course, the horsepower is going to match that. 
Uh, and one thing you do notice is from about 5,000 RPM or so, it runs very slightly leaner. Now the reason for that is because there's simply more airflow going in and out of the engine, so uh, and it's not being accounted for. These old engines run uh, a manifold pressure sensor and an inlet air temperature sensor, so they're a speed density model, as opposed to running uh, a mass airflow sensor, which would account for that extra little bit of air. Uh, and you probably find that the fueling would, would adjust for that. This doesn't, uh, but it's still safe. I mean, it's about 13.3, 13.2, something like that. It's still safe enough. We know it's safe enough. That's fine. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll take the best run from before and the best run from after, and we'll have a look at the comparison. Right, so let me just get this. So again, before we did anything, it made... 162.2 horsepower at the flywheel and 110.79 foot pounds of torque again at the flywheel, uh, which is a decent result. These things come with 158 horsepower, something like that, from the factory. We all know over the years that they all make slightly more than that, you know, so long as they're a healthy enough engines. So that is pretty much bang on, it's about right. Uh, after, we now have 169.8. Horsepower there, virtually 170 horsepower and 113.95 foot pounds of torque, virtually 114 foot pounds of torque. So, again, that's a good result. Uh, and what we find here is pretty much what I expected to find is that you get more of a gain higher up in the RPM range. Again, this is down to airflow, it's, it's uh, simple physics. The, the quicker you can get air in and out of the engine, the better it will be, the more power it will make, and so on. So down low, when the airflow isn't as restricted, you don't see as much of a gain. It's only a small gain there, uh, down in the low RPM. But as you get up higher into the higher RPM, and your airflow becomes more restricted, you get more of an advantage from a uh, free-flowing exhaust, for example, uh, all that sort of stuff, which is why you get more horsepower up higher in the RPM range. That's exactly what we would expect to see, and that's exactly what's happened there. Uh, but for just an exhaust, I mean, we're still running a standard airbox here in the car. There's no, which in my opinion is is pretty, uh, you know, pretty solid way to do it because a lot of the aftermarket air filters, cone filters, that they're not even as good as the standard airbox. So if it were me, I would just put a an upgraded panel filter in there in the factory airbox uh, and run with the exhaust like that and, and leave it. Now there's been no chain or anything done to this car. It's on the factory Honda map, uh, completely standard. The only thing has been the exhaust has been changed. And it just goes to show with some testing, you can see the results there. And again, you'll see the air flow, uh, or sorry, the air fuel ratio comparison here. Uh, the the after run is just slightly leaner there across the board until we get up to peak RPM. That's fine, it's safe, it's going to do absolutely no harm in this setup. It's perfectly good. So, decent results there, yeah, I'm happy enough with that. We just decided to do that little test, uh, pretty much just for fun, just because we could. Uh, so, that's a, a custom made exhaust here at G Sport. Again, you'll see the pictures of the exhaust. I'll add them to the post. You can get a, a bit more, a bit of a better look at it, and you can see the results there on a, on a completely standard factory car. Uh, so, good result, and uh, I'll see you next time.